Welcome to this video. I'm going to walk you through this Argus Excel model and show you how to underwrite a complex real estate investment within 10 minutes. If you are interested, please visit our website at www.financialexcelmodeling.com or reach out to info at financialexcelmodeling.com for more information. This model can dramatically increase your productivities and positions. Let's get into it. The first thing you are going to see is the simple instructions to inform you how to use the model. Click on reset button to clean all data in the model. Since I already clicked on it, I will go straight to the input tab and start inputting assumptions to underwrite a hypothetical real estate investment. As a rule of thumb, all the empty blue cells are inputs. I'm going to input October 1st, 2018 for close date, five years for holding period, which is 60 months, and ABC as a hypothetical deal name. For the time being, I'm going to copy and paste my uses and sources. As you can see, there's plenty of space for uses and sources section, so you can add your line items. I already have my line item names in place. This speeds up the process. Most of them are based on dollar amount, and the two are based on percentage. If you have more percentage line item, don't forget we are still in Excel, so you will be able to change format and cells to meet your needs. Now I finish my uses and sources. I'm moving over to the DAX section. Here comes to the DAX section. I'm going to input 18 month interest only period, 25 year amortization schedule, which is 300 month, and the 5% interest rate. Apart from this, I'm going to refinance on October 1st, 2020 with a cap rate at 8%, loan to value 70%, and a 4.5 interest rate. Assume that the loan to value of mezzanine is 7.3% and the interest rate is 8%. In the marking leasing profile, we define different profiles that will be assigned to tenants later to avoid repetitive inputs. To save some time, I will copy and paste my profile. There are 17 parameters in each profile, which gives you controls on every aspect of underwriting, and they are monthly basis. Then I need to input all the expense names to activate the expense section. Click on Input Expense button, this window is one of the most powerful features in this model. I can define expense on a monthly basis and have complete control on how the expense is going to change. Here I choose to grow the expense by 2% in the first month each year. And I'm going to do so for all expenses and fast forward a little bit. Now I'm finished with window input. I'm going to say all expenses are reimbursable and all expenses are 100% fixed regardless of occupancy except electricity and the utility. 4% for management fee, not reimbursable by tenant. 1% for asset management fee. 8% for general vacancy. Then click on the input marquee rent growth button. 3% for annual rent growth. Click on copy down across and save and sum up all reserves number in total reserve cell. Monthly cash distribution to investor, two tiers in total. Distribution goes to 8% PREF first, then return of capital, at last the first tier of 12% hurdle rate, 2080 split after hurdle. 3070 split. Moving to this position assumptions, 8.5% exit cap and 1.25% disposition costs. Now I'm scrolling back and forth to make sure I have done all necessary input. Everything looks good. 
I'm going to the rent row tab. I'm copying and pasting basic information about rent row into the model. Key metrics like lease start date, lease end date, and the reimbursement method. Now I'm going to input rent schedule for each individual tenant. Click on input lease button. We will see similar window pops up. Input $15.5 and copy down across. Increase $1 each year. Click on Calc button to determine timing of inflation. Click Save. For this tenant, I will increase rent by 2% each year. Type times 1.02 in the text box. Click the first Calc button and then Save. If you remember, I defined market leasing profile previously in the Input tab. I'm going to assign these profiles here. As you can see, individual tenant has different profile and the model is pulling predefined profiles and associating them with the right tenants. So I don't have to manually specify leasing assumptions for each tenant. Usually Excel needs to think for a while to finish the process given the amount of calculation going on in the background. So I'm skipping this part of the video. As you can see, the window marks the downtime and the free rent period for me. After the calculation, I'm going to override a market leasing profile reimbursement method. This tenant will have a fixed amount instead of triple net. Input $1 per square foot. I have the option to customize any leasing assumption parameter. I'm scrolling back to make sure everything is in place. Let's check out annual cash flow. There are arrow signs in the cash flow. This can be fixed in input tab. Click on fix everything button. The model is checking and correcting itself. The report will let you know if there is an error that cannot be fixed automatically. Everything is good. Click OK. Go back to the annual cash flow tab. The arrows went away. Annual waterfall tab shows cash flow of each tier. Go to Tenant Monthly tab. All the massive background calculation happens here. There is 3,500 rows in total. In the Occupancy tab, the red area means a suit is empty. I can see the building occupancy situation throughout the holding period. Moving to the Return Analysis table tab, I already input the exit cap rate and the going-in cap rate and I will input 0.5% for exit cap rate and going cap rate incremental. Then click on the Update Table button. Now we can see this table provides comprehensive return analysis of general partner and limited partner based on various going cap rates and exit cap rates. Last but not least, I need to check out the Executive Summary tab this tab shows all high-level information about the deal, including deal level IR, GPIR, and LPIR. If you are interested, please visit our website at www.financialexcelmodeling.com or reach out to info at for more information.